hello and welcome back to another pretty HD video. Today we have another career mode episode and as you can see we start off with an international friendly against New Zealand. Now I did originally simulate this but unfortunately I forgot to save it. So the original simulation finished 5-0 to us. This is a re-simulation which in the end I can tell you finishes 3-0 or 2-0 either or. But Piazon does open the scoring early on 21st minute and then Raphael adds to it with the second goal of the game. I was playing the logs of Coutinho, Rafinha, Roberto Firmino, Tayez, uh, Danilo plays pretty much all the time as well either way. So I mean there was quite a few uh, unusual players in there along with Piazon and Raphael remember. And then we come up against the next door neighbours of New Zealand, Australia in the next international friendly. This time though we travel over to the Australian continent and we take... Or, Country, country, idiot, I'm not, it's not a continent, Australasia's a continent, boom. But Piazon does yet again score, and this guy is really good, Piazon. I'm actually thinking and considering actually looking at him, not only on transfers with Everton, but promoting him permanently, not only for a international friend to call up but for the World Cup qualifying call ups which are currently occurring and it did take till the 89th minute until we could get the next goal it was 3-2 in the other simulation but in the re-simulation which I am showing you it finished 2-0 so in the end a clean sheet in both games and a great great victory there Spurs Everton now at White Hart Lane, a pretty difficult game because Spurs are doing decent in the league and they aren't the worst of teams, are they? They won the league in season one of our career mode, so that was pretty insane under Mauricio Pochettino and they started this game quite well, hitting the post very early on, I believe that was Roberto Soldado. But as Barkley takes the quick free kick into Struman, what a pass it is by Struman. Can Saves finish the chance off? Oh yes he can. What a pass by Struman and a sensational finish by Saez. Saez gets yet another goal and his Everton career has pretty much blossomed like a flower and seriously Samuel Saez is so good. Kevin Struman is so good. All of our team at the moment just seems to be performing to the best of their ability but Ericsson does create an opportunity for Spurs. He lets one fly and he meets the ball and corner of the net. It's 1-1. It's all level here at White Lane and we cannot do anything about Christian Ericsson's talent. He is a talented kid and trust me he wouldn't go and miss joining our club at any point during the future. I've been scouting him for a long, long time, ever since season one. I don't think I'm going to go in for him, but he certainly is an option for sure if I do ever want to take uh, Ericsson under my helm. 1-1 one, one at half time after a poor attempt by Eric Dier, our centre-back, from the edge of the area. And well, the halfway mark really, really did set foot for the rest of the game because at 1-1, one, one, you can really see us creating something, sort, sort of setting up a new attack. And in the end, La Sena Traore comes on for Stambouli, as Samuel says, has a great chance, but can't really create anything from it. So as the ball was switched over towards Samuel says, he couldn't do anything. For some reason, La Sena Traore kept walking in a circle through the middle of the pitch there, and that was a bit of a glitch. But either way, um, you know, a point from that game, I will take. Benfica now in the Champions League. This is the decider. If we win, we confirm that we finish first because, of course, this is match day five in the Champions League. If we draw, we don't confirm that we finish first. It depends on the results on match day six of whether we finish first in the group. If we lose, Benfica has it in their hands to finish first. The only team we've lost so far is PSV, not only in the Champions League, but in the whole season. So, I mean, PSV, that game was annoying. I mean, if you was here to watch that game, we had 19 shots, they had three, and they beat us 1-0. Yep. But Lukaku steps up to the mark this time. In the PSV game, he just couldn't score. This time, he sets up a great opportunity and really gets us going. As the ball was deployed over to him, he managed to slice the finish with the outside of his into the bottom of the corner of the net and well Jonas puts a great ball in I didn't ask Howard to come for it but the next gen goalkeepers suddenly made the decision to come out for that chance and if Howard would have stayed in his goal he might have had a chance of actually saving it I um, know it was probably my bad for going on the line and pushing the offside line back but I mean you've got to gamble on going on the line sometimes and sometimes it sort of doesn't pay off a bit of karma maybe there and when Yama had another great opportunity he burst through the defence at will but unfortunately it is eventually cleared away and nothing comes of it 
The ball is whipped in though for a corner kick and it's Klammer who gets his head on it. His noggin couldn't quite get it into the back of the net as Julio Cesar is forced into a save. It's once again Lukaku now. Lukaku, he's looking to create a chance for Klame yet again. Klame has the shot. Comes back out to Atsu. And wow, what a finish from Christian Atsu. I was not expecting that. I just swiped my foot at it in hope that something would happen. Something would fall to Atsu. A bit of luck. And I tell you what, that is luck at its best. Christian Atsu, on the turn, slices the ball, swipes his foot into the ball, Makes it, hit the top of the bar, and eventually he comes back out of the net. That's his second goal in the Champions League now. And Christian Atsu is just so, so good. I'm so glad I brought him back to the club for five million from Chelsea. And in the end, I sort of held out the game with a bit of uh, corner work, defensive work, holding the player off the ball. And surely that would have been a foul. I just thought I'd show you that, just out of curiosity. Surely that would have been a foul. That would have been a red in a real game from behind. Dangerous tackle. But either way, you know, we do go into the uh, full-time at 2-1. So we've confirmed first in the Champions League, allowing us for a bit of breathing space when we play Copenhagen in the next and final group stage Champions League game. That's when we move on to the difficult ones, the knockout round, which is where I really, really hope we do well. But this is a great opportunity against Sunderland to sort of get our paces a bit up. Recently, the games have been slightly too tight. They've been too close. I mean, you saw a drawing at Spurs today. I mean, we'd really like a big win here against Sunderland. And that's exactly how we start off. Pantamillion fumbles it, but as says cut inside, he managed to create an opportunity. But unfortunately for him, he couldn't quite guide it into the back of the net. It took a sweaty, sweaty goal for us to first open the scoring and break the deadlock. The deadlock is broken and the stalemate is ended very early on. But it is Ross Barkley with the assist to his name. And Ross Barkley feels threatened at the moment by Thiago in this side. And he is threatened, I'm not going to deny, because Ross Barkley hasn't really been stepping up to the mark recently. And I would really like him to. And it's a great opportunity for Sunderland's free kick tactician Sebastian Larson here, as Thiago brings Jack Rodwell now, one of our former players, and a player we was interested in bringing back to the club. I do go to the line because I know Larson's good at free kicks, and well, it paid off that time. I was on about gambling on going to the line sometimes, and I'll tell you what, that was one where I had to gamble on it, and trust me, it paid off. But says here, he bursts forward on the counter-attack, he's got a chance, he switches the ball across, and Barkley just doesn't meet it. He's got to attack that ball like a flipping panther, a pouncing puma, and he just didn't there. He's got to be bursting his body forward, putting it in to get there first. Unfortunately, he couldn't, but it was a chance from the header. Oh, wow, it's just got it over the roof of the net, and it is another corner kick. It's Baines on the corner. Baines whips it in towards Dia. Dia meets it again. Pantamillion claims, and that will be half time. 45 minutes gone. And that is the current scoreline. We sit in the 1-0 lead as it stands. But there is more opportunity to get more goals and to get more chances and finish off more of Sunderland. Take a little more pride away. It is still a banana skin. One of them type games which I wasn't really looking for. We need to be slightly more lethal, slightly more clinical. But as the ball is delivered over to Barkley now, Barkley picks it up and he manages to ride the tackle. He manages to... Push forward, pushes on the defence, doesn't get sweaty this time and smashes it into the bottom left corner of the net. So we do start this half as we mean to go on and Ross Barkley feels threatened in real life. I mean in real life, in this game. So I mean, it would be really, really good if he could really sort of finish this off here. And I mean, it's lucky for him to get this goal because because he feels threatened, he needs to perform. He needs to not only talk to the press but he needs to talk with his feet and that is exactly what he's done there it's excellent work but as the ball is played into this kick a bit of one-two work Atsu overrides the challenge Atsu oh wow what a chance for Christian Atsu performed really well in the last Champions League game but not there Struman though he has the vision to pick out another excellent pass seems to be what Struman does best it's Samuel Says oh he finishes it like no goalkeeper was even there simple as could be and and Kevin Struman with yet another assist because he is just so good at them beautiful lofted passes. His vision is excellent to pick out a pass like that 
to see the run from Samuel Saiz. He is just so good. And Samuel Saiz is on fire. I mean, 19 goals and we're not even in December yet. It's just insane. It is just insane, if you like, as well. Pardon the pun. Well, the only thing we really were holding out for was the clean sheet. And there was a very, very good opportunity for Sunderland here to prevent us of our clean sheet. But they couldn't quite do that. It is... 3-0 in the end, 3-0. So that was a bit more positive, a bit more satisfying, if you like, a bit more convincing of a win. And that does bring us to the end of this episode. If you did enjoy, make sure you smash the like button. I would really appreciate it. And it really, really does help my channel out. Trust me, every single person who hits the like button, every single person that subscribes, it means the world to me. So if you wouldn't mind, it only takes two seconds of your day. Please hit that subscribe button also. Thank you, and I will see you next time.